So this is the toilet here. It goes straight into the water. And they go and bathe on that sea. We've been told that there's no shooting currently at our checkpoint. There is at another checkpoint, but not at the one we're going to go through. So we've got to get through this checkpoint and basically get out of here while we can. Machine guns being fired over this wall. There it is. You might get shot where you're standing. We need to stand against yeah. this wall yeah. because bullets come over the top. Walking past the houses here, this is made out of porter potty. Look at these living conditions. This is plastic and old corrugated iron. Bonjour. The government burns rubbish, it doesn't put it in landfill? Nope, they burn them. So people play lottery here and you can win 2,000 goods. Uh, what's happening here? So I have to put my car in this area. So when they shoot it, when the bullet's coming from that area, so, so it doesn't it, hit my car. It's really that frequent, oh, all yeah. the time. It's happening all the time. Is this lady going to show us her house, Sean? Yep. It's a bullet hole there. Yep. So you'll just be sitting here and bullets rain down over the whole neighborhood. So they caught that fish from... From that sea where they were doing their needs as well. The toilet. Are they not worried about like a bullet going up and hitting a plane? This is probably the poorest place in the Western Hemisphere where we are right now. Right? It is exactly. You can't go to the coast here because there's snipers. This is the front line right here. Yeah, this is the works wall. They knocked all those blocks down with bullets. The and other gang. The other gangs. Okay, we're almost done here. We can stay for too long. Okay, now we have to just get out of here because we don't want to be caught in crossfire. So to leave to to leave today, today, we're going to have to cross to uh, the area where the shooting is. So we're going to have to go through the shooting. Yeah. Haiti, the poorest country in all of the Americas, a country that has faced constant struggle from earthquakes, 7.3 magnitude earthquake, 220,000 people killed, to gang wars. Gang war rages on in the capital city of Port-au-Prince. Kidnappings and killings getting even worse throughout the country. Armed violence has reached unimaginable and intolerable levels. Countless kidnappings. The country's most powerful gangs is believed to be behind the kidnapping of 17 missionaries. This has become daily life. Tires burning on city streets, protesters furious at the government's inability to confront kidnappers. Corruption. And untold poverty. These are amongst the poorest people in the world. With an average salary of less than $3.50 a day. The situation has become so desperate that there is currently a mass exodus from the country. 200 migrants stopped at sea. Deep in the jungle in Panama, parents clinging to their children, bracing for the hundreds of miles ahead. More than a dozen Haitian migrants are dead after the boat they were on capsized. Millions of people fleeing, risking their lives for the chance of a better one. So what is this notoriously dangerous? country like on the ground. Well, I guess we'll just have to jump on a plane if we want the answer to that one. Gunshots and terror echoing in the streets of Haiti. What is this place? This is actually a war zone. There's guys with guns everywhere. These are some of the roughest streets I've ever seen. And they said they're gonna arrest you. Well, I guess I'm going to a Haitian prison right now. Shame, shame. This country is so extreme. The assassination. President The furthest I've ever been pushed on any of my trips. So basically now we have to just get out of here because we don't want to be caught in crossfire. The bus will protect from stray bullets, is that right? Yeah. No, it's not for your Lord. We saw a kidnapping. So we have to wait behind this wall until the shooting yeah, stops. We'll kill by the gun, we'll die by the gun. Welcome back to Port-au-Prince, capital city of Haiti. Today, we're heading to Cite de Soleil, which is rated as the most dangerous place in the world. Take that for what it's worth. We're obviously not going blind into this place. We do have contacts with gang members and potentially we might be able to meet some of them and, and ask them some questions. There's a full-blown gang war between police and rival gangs. Around a month or so ago, 470 people either killed, disappeared, or seriously injured in this neighborhood, which has sparked a mass exodus. You say I think a population of 400,000 people 
but thousands and thousands have evacuated. They can't stay in their homes anymore. It's just far too dangerous. My local guide, Sean, who you'll meet shortly, he's mentioned that there's a high likelihood that we're gonna hear some fire today, some open fire in the streets. So I've got to listen to what I'm told, keep my head down, see what it's like in this neighborhood, hopefully meet some people who are still living there and, and hear what they're going through. Let's go. We gotta drive about 40 minutes, meet a guy on a motorbike, jump on the back of that motorbike because you can't get in because of flooding. So you can see the desperation of this place. Let's go and see, meet the people, hear their story. I see. Today we're heading downtown to Cité Soleil, City Sun, and try to meet a couple of uh, gang members in that area. They're expecting us. The worst slum area you'll find in the country. Port-au-Prince, which is the capital, which should be the safest area in any country but it's actually the most dangerous cap haitian right now it's blooming with tourists there's a lot of tourists that is going to cap haitian but port au point the capital of haiti is actually the problem and that's where all the kidnapping are happening it's not something that you would heard happen in cap haitian or jacmel or any other places in haiti port au point is actually the problem not haiti and Cité du Soleil is the most dangerous in Cité Port Soleil, exactly uh -huh. and have been since 2004 until now it still is up some water to give out when we get to the slum. Food security is terrible in this country. Okay, so we're just kind of arriving now. We just passed the armored vehicle and you said this is the area where there's rival gang shootouts? Yeah, exactly. This is where exactly that the, uh, the rival gangs, the what you call the G-PIP and the G-9 will start their, uh, their fights. And that's the gang names. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so this is like the border area of G-9's territory? Yes, exactly. Yeah. This is your checkpoint. Okay, so we've just arrived at the checkpoint. No, 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 no. It's all good? Yeah, you get it. Okay, this is a very intense area. Uh, we just pulled over, there was like four guys ran out with massive machine guns. I'm gonna meet one of the gang members who's at the outpost here. This is the checkpoint bar down there. It's basically like a war zone. So Sean, uh, we've just arrived at this uh, gang checkpoint, right? Yeah. And uh, can you just uh, introduce this man and, and what does he do here? Genève qui est en face de Brooklyn. Brooklyn c'est GPEP. Je vais la caille nous. They're fighting against other rival gangs, which called G9. So what they're doing, uh, they want to come and, and come inside of Cité Soleil and uh, start a shooting and putting some, even putting fire in some housing. So their jobs here is to protect uh, uh, any invasion from G9. And this like brick wall, this is the front line right here. Yeah, this is the brick wall. And then they are right down there. I saw another one, yeah. yeah so this them. is like no man's land in between. Yeah, exactly. Reminds me of war zones I've been to in the Middle East and places like that. Well, that's that. exactly what is happening here. You can see uh -huh. all the bags with uh, dots in them right. and all those blocks. And they just tell, they just tell me of cameras. Uh, just recently, they knocked all those blocks down with bullets. The and other gang. The other gang, so they had to fix it. And uh, when was that? Madian. Ah, this, uh, this Tuesday. Okay, this so Tuesday. Just, just a few days just ago. Just recently, yes. How often are you engaged in shootouts? Almost every three days. Every three days? Yes. Right, so right now anything could happen. Yeah. The G9 gang with barbecue, that is actually a shooting toward them. So barbecue for people who don't know is the leader of the other gang. leader of G9. Once a Haitian police officer, he is now the leader of a powerful confederation of gangs called G9. Okay, we're almost done here. We can stay for too long. Okay, let's go. Let's yeah. check, man. Cheers. Crazy. So we just pulled over and we've been told by this guy to park the car here because when they're shooting, the bus will protect from stray bullets. Is that right? Yeah. So when they're shooting, 
this bus, <laughs> uh, bullets will hit this bus. And not your so car. So that my car, so I have to put my car in this area. So when they shoot it, when the bullets coming from that area, so, so it doesn't it, hit my car. It's really that frequent, oh, all yeah, the time. It's happening all the time. Okay. There's buildings that look like a like a full-blown war zone. You know, that could be parts of Syria. There's they've been looked like they've been bombed. So now we're gonna jump on some motorbikes. Yes, and then we're gonna go inside. Right. Deep inside of Sitio Sule. Deep. And so the deeper you go in, does that mean it's safer than like the outskirts? Because exactly. Right. Exactly. Okay. So what would happen? They have control of the all the whole area yeah. inside where they are. But now, what happened is the checkpoint is protecting you from invading. Right, right. We have to get on bikes now because they're flooding up here. It's an absolute mess, this neighborhood. It's completely... Okay. Good So I had to lower the camera there because it was a sensitive area. But uh, yeah, this place is absolutely... This is one of the most desperate places I've ever been. Flooding, sewage, destroyed houses, riddled with weapons. This guy's got serious skills on a motorbike, three of us, and he's driving up curbs. That's, that's not filming him. They're very sensitive to the camera. Because it's facing me, they think it's facing the other ways because there's gang members there. Got to be super careful. I've been to conflict zones all over the world, some desperate places, slums in all kinds of countries in Africa, in Latin America. This is the most desperate hellish place I've seen. I've just got here. This is... I can't really uh, process this at the moment. We just have to walk quickly along there because you can't go to the coast here because there's snipers from the other gang who will shoot from down the coast. So we had to move quite quickly there. Uh, they even shoot children apparently. Here we are in these smoky shacks. This part of the uh, coast is safe, but it's the one to the left, which is... The one to the left is not safe. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Actually, the port, it used to be on the left side. Okay. So because of the shooting, they relocated to the right side. They were shooting here right now? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. So we're walking past the houses here. This is made out of porter potty, porter loose here. So just look at these living conditions. This is plastic and old corrugated iron. I got six children right here and I live the bad life. You were born here? I'm born here. I got 40 years right here. 40 years living here. Yeah. And can you explain to, you know, where I come from, this is really hard to understand, you know, living in these conditions. What's it like? Very difficult. Mm -hmm. If God is not protect me, I did already because got so many young guys. I know already that all the time we got fighting together. I don't know why. How do you earn money here? Money? Yeah. Ah, money. No money. If we want to farm, to get some money, we're supposed to get the boat to go to fish. It. This is the way we, we make the money from the sea. So in the area we just were, they were shooting 30 minutes ago, just before we arrived. When we arrived at the checkpoint, they would have been shooting here. By the time we made it in, you know, we walked past that area. 
so the, the fishermen have to move around. When the shooting happens, they have to kind of change the fishing depending on where the fire's coming from. I met a nice guy here. You can see he doesn't want to be on camera, but you know he's lived here his whole life. He says he can't imagine living here. He's living in these corrugated iron shacks made out of broken construction site toilets. So we've just arrived at the toilet on this beach, and the locals have to to pay to use this. It goes straight into the water and the people are bathing here there's fishermen they catch their fish from here there's sorry there's floating feces here what do you think of that okay. oh, look at that. <laughs> right oh. have right you not there. seen this before Sean? the first time i've seen it, i've been coming here since 2003 right i've never noticed was existed here see the fishermen there's a guy fishing. walking in the uh, yeah they're walking the and, and shit and they go and bathe on that sea yeah see? so this is where they wash themselves that's insane disgusting yeah. they i'm wash. sorry man just put it out yeah, that's, this is, that doesn't it make must sense. be disease so this is the toilet here some toilet paper used there we just saw a, a girl come in and use it and... <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> and use this toilet. Okay, I'm just uh, composing myself. This is... Uh, oh my god. This place is um, really shocking. Not sure how well I, I captured coming in. It was moving really fast. We were like riding through, you know, flooding. You know, there's guys with guns everywhere. When we arrived, they ran up to the car with these massive weapons. They're gonna show, it, show us the weapons soon. There's things on fire, there's rubbish everywhere. There's these toilets, they're swimming in, in you know, the feces. So you can make out, this is all the, the feces here, just floating. People come, they swim. I'm standing on trash right now, this is all rubbish. Keep in mind, the fishermen have to be careful of bullets hitting them. So they caught that fish from just there? From that sea where you saw um, they were doing their needs as well. The toilet? The toilet. Uh -huh. So that's where they catch that fish. I wonder if they're not going to get sick. Can you ask, do you ever get sick or you never get sick? No. No? no? Strong immune system. It looks like it. The airport is just behind Sit de Sole slum here. Are they not worried about like a bullet going up and hitting a plane? They never do that. No? But by accident or something? No? Sometimes they fight to get there. Ba 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 and then yeah. the plane's coming. Oh, they never fight. Boom. Right. They never do that. So the plane's like, the airport's Safe. right there. All airport. the tourists are coming airport. in. Yes. And they and the tourists like have no idea what's happening below them, right? Mm -hmm. So these tourists come in, they might go and to they, nice beach resorts and stuff and right below the airport where they're touching down their first, you know, maybe. contact with the country, this is happening. Yeah, thanks. Is this lady going to show us her house, Sean? Yep. Okay. Martin Belzo, eh? Ah, that's it. Okay. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. It's a bullet hole there. Yeah. So you'll just be sitting here and just bullets rain down over the whole neighborhood all the time, every day. That's uh, something that happened constantly. Just while we were here, I heard a bullet. While you were filming, uh -huh. uh, interviewing him, I heard the bullet and I was like asking one of them, is that a bullet? They said, yep, that's coming from uh, the G9. Mm -hmm. Crazy. So there is actually five people leaving in here. Five? Five people. Okay, so basically they have three people sleeping in the bed and two people sleep in the ground. When it's raining, it's actually a struggle for them. They have the tent sheet. Yeah. You can see the holes in it. Yeah. So when it's raining, uh, they got flooded. And also, uh, the bed that they're sleeping on, uh, it would be flooded with water. So they will use this plastic bag and put it on the bed and they will take those containers here and they will uh, collect the rainwater and throw it outside. Okay. And then once it's done raining, they will be able to, be, to sleep again. Right. So they, they would have to stand the whole night if it's raining. Do you have to pay rent here or how does it work? Pay or pay. Yeah, they have to pay rent. They can pay 400 dollars, they can pay 600 dollars. 
Oh, 3,000 goods every six months. Okay, so 6,000 a year. It will fit a show. It's like a sauna in here. What do you see for your future? Will you stay here or would you like to leave? So it's not safe. There is always shooting. People are dying. If she had the need, she would leave already. But she doesn't have it for now. And that's why she still remains in City Soleil. And have you lost anybody close to you in any fighting? Yeah, she had a cousin that was killed. He was coming back from work and then, uh, uh, then they shot him. So this is a new house, you can see the, yeah, the, the new. Yeah, the is all new. You can go in. So this is how people live here, on rubble. There's a, a bed there, but that's it. It's just rocks. Piles of rocks. Some cooking stuff. Kitchen here. This is uh, easily the most desperate place I've ever seen in my life. Sean? Yep. Uh, what's happening here? Grapefruit. Grapefruit? Breadfruit. Breadfruit. Oh, yeah. Can you just explain like what it's made from? She's going to do a stew and she's going to go around the neighborhood and sell it. Uh -huh. But she make it with uh, breadfruit. What's that? Breadfruit, it's, uh, you'll find it mostly in the Caribbean. If we remember with history, that is something that the French used to feed the slave with. And uh, it was actually neglect in the Haitian community everywhere that many people didn't even eat it. But doing uh, those kind of, those, those problem with food insecurity and with hunger, now they're trying to eat the breadfruit again. It's actually a fruit that is grow in a tree. Okay. It looks green. And then once it's ripe, it's ready to use. So they, they pick it and they um, cook it, boil it. And after that, they beat it up until it become like a stool. Yeah, yeah. And and how much it, does it cost for one portion? Uh, combien vend ti ti bol tom tom la? Ah, pour quinze dollars. Quinze dollars? Oh, seventy five goods. It's like a lot of food for a really cheap price. Yes. Okay. And would you say that most people eat this? Oh, a lot of people, even in, all over Haiti, are eating tom tom nowadays. Right. Okra. <laughs> That's the okra. Yeah, the okra. So I've seen these little bank kiosk stands around. These are actually lottery. So people play lottery here and you can win 2,000 goods. If lottery exists everywhere, right? This is like the runoff from the nicest like parts of the city up in the mountain area, like the hotel I'm staying in. And then there's also hotels there where you can pay like five grand a night, US dollars, and all the rubbish and the trash gets washed down here into the basically the poorest place in yes, the west. Exactly. This, is, this is probably the poorest place in the western hemisphere where we are right now. It right? is exactly. It's the uh, Cité Soleil, I mean, in some areas they don't even pick up the trash and when it's rain there is no other places that it would wash off. So it comes down to that area of Cité Soleil then uh, they would have to suffer. Would you say that that's a metaphor? I mean, if they themselves are quite dirty, what do you think they're going to do to the streets? that they go about, what do you think they're going to do to the other people? All the rubbish comes here, even to burn them. The government burns rubbish, it doesn't put it in landfill? Nope, they burn them. There's no landfill here? No, there is no landfill, they right. just burn them. So the fence here is made of an old, old bed springs. Sean, this is one of your projects that you, you know, you do some work, charity work here, right? Oh, and yes. there's, uh, uh, you say, yams and peas they have being yams grown here? here? They have peas. Sweet potato, papaya. Are these given out to families to cook and things? Yes. And you want to make this bigger? Yeah, we should get it bigger because I can see that uh, they are very motivated. Uh, we bought them the plants, we bought them the soil. They're doing pretty well with it. So we, uh, I think the organization, the NGO is thinking of enlarging it, making it bigger. So we're just arriving at the hospital here. Is this a functional hospital? Uh, yes, sometimes. But if there is rival gang fighting, the doctors or the nurses will not be able to come. They receive all kind of patients in this hospital. Uh -huh. But um, mostly those who have uh, hit by gun wounds. This is an empty hospital? <coughs> yes. 
As I was just informed now that uh, there were uh, patients and people that was uh, hit by gun wounds, and they already removed them. We look at them to the other hospitals. So that happened yesterday. There's blood stains from gang war yesterday. This is all the blood you see on the ground. When there's a, a shootout or something, then the doctors will come in, they'll help people and they'll move them to uh, the compound down the street, which is Doctors Without Borders. And yeah, but there's blood, there's blood on the ground, there's blood everywhere. Mad, mad. After filming those blood scenes, you can hear now, I don't know if you can make it out, but there's machine guns being fired over this wall. Just after we come out looking at those blood stains, walk out. There it is. You might got shut where you're standing. <laughs> really? Yeah. We, we need to stand against yeah. this wall. Yeah. Because bullets come over the top. Yeah, they, you hear they, they keep shooting. It's a lot. And then you, they were showing me on that container here. Uh -huh. That's where bullets hit. Let's go here until the shooting stops. So to leave to to, leave to today, this way, we're going to have to cross to uh, the area where the shooting is. So we're going to have to go through the shooting. Yeah. So we can hear bullet holes all around us. I think they're coming from this way. Uh, so, you know, we're gonna have to drive through that. So here is a, a building which is, uh, you can see it's crumbled down. This is from the earthquake in 2010, which, you know, destroyed many houses here and still they're not fixed. So behind me is the, at the school here and I wanted to show the school and, you know, show the good work because they actually feed people here, you know. And there is an organization uh, that, you know, helps fund this. You know, they provide education and food, which is obviously very important. Um, but everybody's left because of the shooting, so we can't go inside. It's all locked up. 350 kids in there uh -huh. and then we have the kitchen on that side. I'm going to leave a link below to Third World yes. Awareness is the name of the NGO, right? Yes. Uh, unfortunately, you know, I can't show you the work because they've yeah. run from the shooting. But, you know, you can understand, I don't really think you have to see in there to, to see why it's needed. This place is very yeah. desperate, right? Yeah. And so, you know, any donations that you guys have, you know, they'll go a long way. What, how what you were saying, like a, a meal is, is very cheap, like that A woman. meal is very cheap. A meal will cost about two U US dollars. Two US That's dollars. Cheap. So what we do, we have one big meal for all of them. Uh-huh provide them with a lunch. And so if somebody donated $10, that's five kids' meals that's taken care kids, of. Just taken $10, care of already, yes. like many of us spend that for a coffee and a, oh, yes. and a sandwich. So if somebody wants to, you know, chip in. And we also take care of the teachers. Uh, we give them a little bit of money, like $200, $100 right. uh, for the, the year. It's a Canadian organization? It's a Canadian organization from Toronto. Been working with them since 2003. Since then, they have been working in different uh, aspect uh, building housing for them fixing their homes that were uh, that are leaking like those uh, 10 sheet houses and building this school building trench and building a garden for them so there is a lot of uh, things that we do in city soleil we actually left our footprints here sounds like a great project so i'll leave the information below and uh, you can go on and, and donate and read more about it there's lots of information there right yes sir cool. Driving through the floodwaters again, and we have to. Uh, we've been told that there's no shooting currently at our checkpoint. There is at another checkpoint, but not at the one we're going to go through. So we've got to get through this checkpoint and basically get out of here while we can. You know, you got to choose your moments here, and you know, I take the advice of these guys when to go. Look at this. I have no words for this. Whoa! Almost crashed into that wall. 
So basically now we have to just get out of here because we don't want to be caught in crossfire. Merci, monsieur. Okay. Au revoir. Bye-bye. So we've just got back in the car that we parked behind this school bus. So it wouldn't get shot. Now we have to go back through the checkpoint and hopefully get out of here unscathed. Something happened on the way home. Yeah. We saw something. My brain is running circles right now. It's not really functioning um, as it should be. We saw a kidnapping. Yeah, we saw a kidnapping. When we left, you know, we had to get out of there. We had to get out because there was about to be a, a full-on shootout. That's all we were focused on. We had to get out. We were, they were going to show us some of the guns and things on the way out. That was the original plan, but then we were warned there's going to be a battle. There were gunshots going all day. We were being warned not to walk, walk in certain places. We saw blood on the ground. We heard gunshots. We were hiding behind walls. We obviously saw the weaponry. We met high-ranking gang members. Very high-ranking. And yeah, we just had to get out of there. There was guys everywhere driving towards the front line. We got out of there and on the way home, I can't tell you where it was. I can't give you details because I will be putting people's lives in danger. Um, I, can't, I can't share the intricate details of, of what happened this afternoon here in Port-au-Prince, but we saw a kidnapping. After we left Cite de Soleil, Sun City, that slum that was hell on earth, really. You know, and that's what the people themselves were calling it. I've never seen, you know, I've been to some of the most desperate places in the world, and uh, that's uh, at the top. Not only the extreme poverty, the lack of food, the, the, the terrible living conditions, the no insulation, the holes in the roof with the rain coming through, the, the rocks on the ground that people sleep on, but then there's constant gunfire, there's bullets coming through people's windows, there's you know gang members. There was a whole other part of that neighborhood we didn't go into that had just been completely torched and blown up. And the rival gangs, they turn off each other's electricity, they shut off water supply, and who suffers? It's the people living there, you know, you saw them. You saw the living conditions. We left and we saw these guys surround this, this car with weapons and took this person out of the car and we didn't see the rest. We got out of there, you know. Nothing we could have done, only gotten ourselves injured or worse. Something. Yeah, this is the real deal, this place, for sure. You know, I saw lots of things today, many things that, you know, I couldn't share, but, um, you know, I don't want to get anybody killed. We were just talking about kidnappings in the last video. Today, saw one. What can I add to that, you know? I can't say anything. Nothing I can do without, you know, putting not only myself in grave danger, but, you know, the people who are look after, looking after me here, so. See you in the next video. Still got lots more days in this country. Thanks for watching.